Go back to Party City where you belong. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 moments from Season 4 of RuPaul's Drag Race. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're choosing the most memorable moments from Drag Race's fourth season. This won't include anything from Untuck, though, because those deserve a separate list. A word of warning for those who haven't seen this season yet, you're now entering spoiler territory. Number 10. Jiggly Caliente's Post-Apocalyptic Couture The first challenge of Season 4 started off looking more like The Walking Dead than Drag Race. RuPaul forced the queens to salvage materials for a post-apocalyptic runway look while fending off attacks from zombies, who happened to also be past contestants. Their former competitors from competitions past. Chanel, Venus, Morgan McMichael, Delta Work. New York native Jiggly Caliente, but you can call her Jiggly, took a real shine to some tinfoil. And just about everything else she could find. This is my Escape from New York post-apocalyptic outfit. The resulting outfit, if you want to call it that, was a hodgepodge of feathers, foil, dreadlocks, and neon colors. It's up there with some of the worst constructed garments in the show's history, but she sure wore the hell out of it anyway. Oh! Look, boy, she's got a leg boy. up on the other girls. Yes, she does. Apparently, yeah. hoarding is the new black. <laughs> Number 9. The Wrestling Challenge Taking inspiration from the gorgeous ladies of wrestling, RuPaul challenged the queens to stage two wrestling matches in the second episode of the season. Mess with these nasty girls, and you'll end up with a bad taste in your mouth. Each group had to create a character, learn some moves, and act out a scene to set up their heroes versus villains fight. All the queens rose to the occasion and got into character for the fight. Madame Lequeer, who had an injured ankle, brought her A-game despite the physical demands of the challenge, putting the blame on an old injury. If my ankle hurt it, I forgot about everything. I was Madame Le Crush in that moment. Meanwhile, others rose to the occasion to put on a surprisingly convincing match that was full of fun, drama, and plenty of fake violence. Sorry, we mean real violence. Either way, Latrice Royale did not come to play for this challenge. <laughs> Number 8. Willem and Latrice Royale's Better Than You Performance The eighth episode of this season began with an unusual mini-challenge, a lie detector test. Are you now, or have you ever been, a biological woman? No. Each remaining queen was connected to a polygraph machine and interrogated by RuPaul. What they didn't know was that their answers would determine who their partner would be in the Rusical main challenge. Willem, you're paired with Latrice Royale. <laughs> Fifi O'Hara, you're paired with Sharon Needles. Party City. But Rue wasn't playing BFF matchmaker. The theme of the episode was frenemies. And surprise, surprise, Sharon Needles and Fifi O'Hara were paired up. Unfortunately, they couldn't make their hateful chemistry work in their favor, leaving teammates Willem and Latrice to steal a show. I do it so much better than you. I think she added a teaspoon or two of Christina Aguilera, but that's another matter. The unlikely duo gelled together like PB&J. Their number was playfully bitchy and well put together, begging them a joint win. I do it so much better than you. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> uh huh. I feel good vibes coming from this. I, I do. do. Number seven, Latrice Royale's Tuckaho character. This was Latrice's moment to prove herself a breakout star of the season. The main challenge of Queens Behind Bars had the girls acting in a prison based sitcom called Hot in Tuckaho. Ladies, no one needs to go to jail for liking nuts. Why well, have a huge sack? After being split into Team Willem and Team Madame Laqueer, Latrice ended up on Willem's team. As Willem herself will tell you over and over again, she's a professional actress with lots of TV experience, making her the obvious frontrunner to snatch the week's win. Oh, me first! Give Ooh. me! William? Willem. I, Willem. Thank you. It's spelled right on my headshot. It's in there, so just on the way out. So, William, it's just to make sure you get all the words in there. Unfortunately for Willem, the role of sassy police officer was tailor-made for Latrice. She absolutely nailed the character's hilarious catchphrase. Get those nuts away from my face! It was so memorable, in fact, Latrice made a cameo in Season 7 reprising her Tekaho role. Get those nuts away from my face! <laughs> <laughs> Number 6. Dita Ritz's An Everlasting Love Lip Sync 
Some lip syncs for your life are tight as anything, while others are the lip sync between the princess and Dita Ritz. This will be an everlasting love. This will be the one I've waited for. The pair fell into the bottom two in the third episode after failing to impress the judges with their infomercials plugging RuPaul's music. Their lip sync song is by Natalie Cole, who just happened to also be sitting right in front of the girls as they performed. No pressure then. Natalie Cole is sitting right in front of me. I have to do it for her. I don't want her to leave saying that drag queen did a horrible job of my song. The princess did her best, but came up short against Dita's tour de force of a lip sync. Using every fiber of her being, Dita danced circles around her competition. In the end, there could only be one winner. That is what a lip sync for your life is, baby. That is high drag at its finest. Number 5. Sharon Needle's Post-Apocalyptic Runway Look As we mentioned earlier, the main challenge of Season 4 forced the fresh batch of contestants to dig for scraps amid a zombie drag queen attack. Using what they'd salvaged, they then had to create and showcase post-apocalyptic themed couture on the main stage. The brief produced some very creative fashion, including LaShawn Beyond's towering headpiece, which we still have no idea how she kept it upright. But Sharon Needles mopped the floor with the competition, and mopped it with blood. Her Hellraiser look was shocking enough, but this gross effect on the runway left the judges gasping. Right from the get-go, Sharon proved her spooky edge could take her right to the top. Number 4. Latrice Royale's Natural Woman Lip Sync Rarely does standing in the same spot during a lip sync earn you a Shantae you stay from RuPaul. Before the day I met you, life was so unkind. This legendary performance happened at the end of the Dad's I'd Like to Frock episode, the staple makeover challenge of the series in which the queens had to turn fathers into expecting drag mothers. Kenya Michaels, who'd recently returned to the competition, ended up in the bottom two with Latrice, and both of them had very different takes on the Aretha Franklin classic. While Kenya was lively, Latrice was slow and expressive, dedicating the song to her fake baby bump. Her moving performance saved her from elimination for the second week in a row. You make me feel like a natural woman. Number 3. Chad Michaels and Sharon Needle Snatch Game Performances as a famed Cher impersonator, Chad Michael's pick for the Snatch Game was a no-brainer. The original dark lady, Cher, is here. I've been there, done that. I spread La Mer on my toast in the morning, all right? You know, I'm Cher, bitch. However, the pressure to deliver a perfect impression of the iconic diva couldn't have been worse for Chad going into the challenge. As RuPaul tells us year after year, the secret to Snatch Game isn't just about getting the look and voice right. You gotta make Ru laugh. And laugh he did at Chad's foul mouth performance. I'm wearing the shit out of this headpiece. I paid a lot for it. So. Yeah, yes, you did. Yes. yes, you did. Those girls are real sleazy. They're scabies, crabs, and fleas. Don't move. Not only did Chad capture Cher's no filter attitude, but her constant wig changing made sure the camera kept coming to her. And who could forget Cher Needle's hilarious Michelle Visage impersonation? Not only did she do her research, but she knew just what to say to keep Rue laughing. That's no excuse. You should have seen what me and Rue were on yeah. at the limelight. <laughs> it's all behind us now. We're on uppers, downers, and candy corn. <laughs> Number 2. Willem's Disqualification Though elimination twists have become more common on Drag Race, this one will have us gagging forever. Willem. Will you please step forward? Willem had a rocky time on the show, and her exit was no different. After Fifi O'Hara and Sharon Needles lip-synced against each other in episode 8, they waited tensely for the result. To everyone's surprise, RuPaul asked Willem, who had just been suddenly sick off stage, to step forward and disqualified her for rule-breaking. Your actions have consequences, and I'm afraid you leave me no choice. Willem, I have to ask you to leave the competition immediately. Curious viewers had to wait weeks until Willem revealed in the finale that her elimination came down to, well, horniness. Visiting makes it sound like we were visiting and there wasn't no talking. Six years later, the tea is still coming, with Willem tweeting that she actually did it because of poor working conditions on set. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Latrice, can you take us to church? Whoa, Jesus is a biscuit. Ah, Jesus is a biscuit. Oh, 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 my goodness. The level of unprofessionalism, far too much. Hallelujah, I'm back, bitches! Yes! I'm back, bitches! Oh, hell 
which is a no? Number 1. Sharon Needles and Fifi O'Hara Showdown It was a drag race rivalry to end all drag race rivalries. Though Sharon and Phoebe have since kissed and made up, we'll never forget how much they once hated each other. Well, basically what I said was I felt that you kind of, you know, pushed me into, you know, just doing my spooky look and that it was irresponsible and I thought it was kind of sloppy just Ooh. because I told you something that you're good at. The pair butted heads from the start because of their totally different drag styles. After Sharon secured a second win in the infomercials challenge, she confronted Fifi for forcing her into a spooky box. Because I told you mm. to go in your closet and dig out that goddamn gothic look. Fifi, who had been team captain in the challenge, was confused by this, telling Sharon she simply gave her a character that she could excel at. You are not even on the same level as me, so get the f*** out of right, my face. Right, because you get the f*** out of my you face. It didn't take long until the tension exploded, giving us two of the best insults in Drag Race history. Tired ass showgirl. That you. showgirl, at least I am a showgirl, bitch. Go back to Party City where you belong. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.